Okay guys, hey, it's Jeffrey Mitchell, uh, Strategic Response Tactical LLC, and YouTube channel would be SRT Armorer. So, this video is going to be the Bolt Carrier Group, the Colt LE 6920, the Bolt Carrier Group that came with it. That Bolt Carrier Group is actually assembled in, in the gun itself. Uh, I didn't necessarily want to pull the gun apart to pull that out in order to do this video, but I wanted to show you the TDPs. And I have a document that I created years ago that uh, it's got every bit of information on there that you would possibly want to know, including the TDP specs that I uh, went ahead and put all this information on here. And this is the information that I got directly from that bolt carrier group. So I'm going to talk about it right now. So the first aspect of it is the... Uh, as it says here on the thing, uh, the rifle type was an LE6920. It's basically an M4 today's date. Round count only had test fire rounds on it, so less than less than five rounds, between five and ten. I'll we'll just say that. Uh, the brand is a Colt. Uh, one of the notes that I put on there, uh, besides the finish, the finish on the bolt carrier group on the bolt itself or the carrier was phosphate and it's chrome lined and I noted to annotated on there that the uh, gas key is also chrome lined and the carrier is actually C marked right proving that it's actually a Colt and it was also and I do I talk about it in the bolt itself uh, I'll tell you more about that when I get down to it so the carrier itself um, overall length is supposed to be 6.677 and the, the TDP states it's supposed to be 6.672 plus or minus 0 0.005. The measurement came out, as you can see, 6.677. So let me pull up that image. And I apologize, I should have had all of these up here. But uh, there's a lot... Of information right there now this is the bolt carrier group and if you'll note right here in the bottom left hand corner it shows it's supposed to be 6.672 plus or minus 0 0.005 as I have it on here on this document and it measured out at 6.677 actually exactly what it's supposed to be I mean it's on the high end of the tolerance but that's okay there's nothing wrong with that um, the gas key, which was the first picture that I had up here, let me go back to that, is the big thing about that, being chrome lined, that's the, one of the biggest things about it, but this dimension here where the gas tube goes into the gas key, the TDP states is supposed to be 0 0.1805 plus 0 0.0008. So I measured it and... It gauged out at exactly 0 0.180. Perfect. That's the size that it needs to be. And if I'm not mistaken, when I measured the gas tube, the external dimension of the gas tube was 0 0.180 as well. So it's literally a tight fit, which is good. It'll wear in a little bit, which is no big deal. The, state, the screws that are on the gas key, and I'll pull up. This is not the carrier, as I, as I stated. The screws that you see right there... They are supposed to be torqued, specced up to 58 inch-pounds when they're installed. And I do a reverse torque test on them. I start out at 20 inch-pounds, and I reverse against it and see if it breaks loose. If they don't break loose, then I step it up to 30 inch-pounds. And it checked out great on both 20 and 30. Nothing, nothing came loose, which is good. If you go above 30, then you start destroying the actual installation torque that's on there so I did not want to do that and the carrier key itself let me put this down I don't have enough hands the carrier key itself is supposed to be sealed to the bolt well I noted on the actual bolt itself that there was some material coming out of this area right here and that was from the 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 uh, material that they use to a gasket type material years ago used to be Indian shellac uh, most people now use uh, 1620 or let me see what's some of the others 
I'm sorry, 620 uh, sleeve retention compound. There's different brands. That's the ones that I have here. But anyway, big thing about it, the, the screws were torqued in fine. They were staked great. The staking is what actually helps support the, tor the screws so they don't back out. They were phenomenal on a thing. And uh, I checked the gas passage on it, and it was perfectly clear. This gas passage, you should be able to put a uh, weed eater line down through there while it's installed on the carrier. And it should just go in and out with no problem. If it hangs up, then there might be a potential problem. You probably should pull it apart. But uh, moving on. The three bore on the carrier itself. This is the carrier, remember. This is the bolt. So I'm talking about the carrier specifically. It has three bores that are very critical that you need to know what the dimensions are. That way, you know, if you have a very efficient bolt carrier group and we'll use that picture so the dimensions the TDP dimensions so the first chamber we'll call it the first chamber is and I call it the shoulder chamber for the for the bolt that would be this piece right here as you can see it's probably raised up a little bit that's what the bolt rides on and it's supposed to be relatively tight the TDP the TDP specs on that is 0 .5, 0 0.315 plus or minus 0 0.001. When I measured it out and gauged it out, it came out to 0 0.531, which is exactly what it's supposed to be. The gas ring run, which is this area back in here, it's a little bit smaller. It's gauged, it's supposed to be TDP at 0 0.500 plus or minus 0 0.001. Well, when I gauged it, it came out to 0.499, so it's actually exactly the way that it's supposed to be. And finally, the tail section back in here, where the back portion of the bolt, this section here, goes back in there. Obviously, it's considerably smaller than the blueprint, but uh, it, TDP was supposed to be 0.2523 plus or minus 0.0003. So when I measured it on that other carrier, it came out to 0.251. So it was just a little bit undersized, less than two thousandths undersized. And that kind of makes it slightly inefficient, but not enough to actually worry about. Because once you fire the gun a couple of times, put a, you know, put a few rounds through it, it's going to carbon up and it's going to seal it up. And it's going to become a very efficient bolt carrier group. So going to move on to the bolt now this this section here this thing here I'm going to pull up that TDP blueprint and let's see if that's what I want no that's not the right one let me pull the other one there's a lot of blueprints in here there really are uh, let me see if I can get a better picture. This is a lot easier than pulling the blueprints out. The blueprints are roughly uh, three feet by two feet, and I have them hanging in my closet. And it's a lot easier to use this because I can maneuver it around. Again, my apologies for pulling up. Let me get rid of this or talk about that. Talk about the carrier. Bolt carrier. Uh, firing pin. We're talking about the bolt. <coughs> Excuse me. That's the one that's up right now. I want the dimensions off of it so you can see them. I don't want anybody to be like, hey, you're not showing what we're supposed to have. Okay, so one of the things that need to be concerned about is the overall length of the bolt itself. So from here back to the end of the tail, it should be no longer than 2.797. I measured the one for the Colt and it was just slightly under by a, a thousandths of an inch. It was 2.796. You can see the measurements right here. The main shoulder, what I was talking about earlier, this thing here, this little, you can see, it's like it's worn on this. I pulled this one out so you could see it because it's a little bit easier to see than on a brand new one. The shoulder should be 0 0.5280 plus or minus 0 0.0005. So the shoulder, when I 
measured it out with calipers was 0.5275. So it literally is to TDP specs at the low end, which is fine. The tail back here is TDP'd at 0 0.2503 plus or minus 0 0.0002. So when I measured this with the calipers on the other, other bolt, it came out to 0 0.250. So just a little bit undersized. So I remember the bore was 0 0.251, but the tail measured out at 0 0.250. So there's only literally one thousandth of an inch difference. So again, when you fire the round, fire rounds off on it, it's going to carbon it up and it's going to seal it up. Cam pin hole right here. That's where the cam pin goes in. It's supposed to be 0.31275 plus or minus 0 0.00075. So the one that I measured was 0 0.311. So this hole was 0 0.311 on the Colt. Well, the cam pin itself, this thing, measured out at 0 0.311. So it literally is a snug fit, very good snug fit. The other thing you want to be concerned about is the firing pin opening where the firing pin comes out. It's supposed to be 0 0.60635. And is this on here? One of these drawing has it a lot better. Can't see it as well. Lots of information on these blueprints, boatloads. You basically have to be a machinist to be able to read them pretty well. Let me shrink it down and see if it shows better dimensions. Ah, there it is. 0 0.0635 plus or minus 0 0.001. The firing pin opening on the Colt was 0 0.063. So it's on the lower end between mid and lower, but perfectly fine, not a problem. The firing pin protrusion, which I'll pull this up here so you can see it, is when you got the firing pin and you stick the firing, the firing pin into the bolt, where the firing pin comes through the hole, that's the protrusion. You don't want that to be any less than 0 0.0. To eight, and it shouldn't be any more than 0 0.036. Now on the Colt, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, this is because it's a brand new gun and a the tolerances are so tight on it. When I measured the firing pin protrusion, it came out to 0 0.029, as you can see here annotated. And I also put on the thing, it could be longer. I would like to see it between 0 0.030 and 0 0.03. Two, maybe, doesn't necessarily need to be any longer than that. If it's if it's really any longer than 0 0.0334 or 0.35, then you run it potentially puncturing the uh, primer on the round and causing the round to explode, which would not be a good thing. Okay, moving on. The firing pin bore, which is this hole right here where the firing pin's going in. And then it's going to push me into the next segment of what I wanted to talk about. The firing pin bore should be 0.157, plus or minus 0 0.001. On the firing pin bore on the one I checked for the Colt was 0.157. The bolt face, and I don't think this one actually has a picture, where the round goes in. Let me grab an inner round. Where the round goes into the bolts right there, that diameter is supposed to be 0 0.380. And guess what? On the Colt, it was exactly 0 0.380. And does this one show it? Now, all these dimensions I, I'm telling you about are after it's been heat treated and after they have been... Uh, chrome lined and everything else. So all those dimensions are after everything's all said and done, the finished product. Keep that in mind. Okay. 
So we talked about the carrier. We talked about the carrier three bore. We talked about the bolt. Now the ejector I checked on the the uh, Colt bolt, Colt bolt. It's this thing right here. Use a pointer. This thing right there. Um, a lot of manufacturers, when they manufacture these, they don't do them as well as they should, and they're straight, just sheared straight across. They need to have a little chamfer around it, all the way around that outside edge. That way, it doesn't hang up, doesn't peen over, or anything like that, which they could potentially do due to firing. Um, but yeah, the one on the Colt was chamfered perfectly. Uh, check the spring on it. Brand new spring, so obviously it was very strong, so I was pretty happy about that. Uh, moving on to the extractor. And I don't have the extractor up here, I don't think. Firing pin, the bolt. We're going to talk about the firing pin here in a second. Oh, real quick. The cam pin, dimensions on the cam pin right here, 0.3105. When I measured the one on the thing, remember, it was 0.311. So it's exactly where it needs to be for the TDP. Uh, let me see. I don't want to go backwards. There's my train of thought. The extractor, which is this thing here, which goes on to the bolt. And I wish I could show you how it goes on there, but YouTube told me I'm not allowed to do that anymore. So I don't want to get any trouble with them. I'll make this one go away. We don't need to we'll do the firing pin up here. Uh, actually, let me go to, and you can see all this crap. Schematics. Lots of info. Whole lot of info. Don't tell me my computer's going to freeze up. There we go. Components. Uh, extractor. Damn it. There's a... F extractor. My computer is not wanting to work today. And I have to open it in paint because the computer that I'm using doesn't have the correct ability to open it in a TIFF file. If you know anything about computers, I know very little about that, but I know it'll open in paint. So let me shrink this down, get a better picture of the extractor. So this is the extractor, this piece right here. And we're at 18 minutes. I'm going to try to keep this under 30 minutes if I can. Uh, the extractor is to the TDP, it's supposed to be, uh, material supposed to be steel 4140 or 4340 gun quality annealed cold drawn stress relief. This is what it says right here. And protective finish is mill standard ITI, um, pretty much, uh, phosphate. And, uh, all these, all those notes over here tell, tell you exactly what all these things and every one of the TDP Blueprints shows all this information on there and it gives you the notes of what it should be. So when the uh, manufacturers are creating these things, they know exactly what it's supposed to be. So the extractor itself, the free play was good. It's supposed to be able to spin around on the extractor pin, which goes through here. Doing this on camera is really weird. And should spin freely, which it does. Um, actually, you know what? I don't care. If I get in trouble, we get in trouble. So, to put this in, the spring for the Colt uh, actually was a gold four coil Colt spring, and it had the uh, insert, the Colt insert, what it's supposed to be. Pretty heavy duty. Strings really strong. The only other spring that I like any better is made by Sprinko. So you, you slide this into the bolt 
and you'll notice right here there's a hole right there and you got to press down on there really tight and it's murder on the thumb if it's a strong spring and you slide that pin in there making sure it's all the way in and equally distributed in the hole itself so that's how you put the extractor on there the ejector is a little bit different uh, you have to actually drive it out and there's a tool that you use to do that I'll, I'll do a video on uh, that stuff one of these days once I know it's okay to do um, a lot of guns come with the coil spring where is it at? it doesn't show it on here now but there's a, a coil spring that goes up in here in this little area and they have the insert that's down in there and that insert actually if your spring gets compressed down to where it's the same size as that insert you need to replace it uh, that's one of the cool things about the design that it has um, where was I going with that? I can't remember. But anyway, that's the extractor. That's how it goes in there. So this is basically ready to go back into the carrier, the bolt. Now the firing pin, which I was going to talk about. Uh, pull this up. Firing pin dimensions. You can see right here. 3.277 now this is not the cold firing pin but this this bulk carrier group is really close in the same dimensions as the colt the overall length is 3.277 per per the tdp when i measured the colt is 3.2775 so just slightly slightly over half a half a ten thousandth too big no big deal that's hard to say half of a ten thousandths yeah Shoulder diameter, which is this thing right here, is not supposed to be any more than 0.375 and no less than 0.370. If it's any smaller than that, you potentially could run into problems. And I believe it shows the picture. Right there. Nope, I don't want to do that. I hope it doesn't undo that action. Yeah, I don't want to draw on it. I don't want to draw on it. So this dimension, critical, what I'm talking about. I'm going to move it down. It's going to be over here. Can't go any farther than that. 0.375, no less than 5,000 smaller. So no less than 0 0.370. When I measured the Colt out, it was 0.375 as you can see shaft diameter that's another biggie you should be aware of i'm going to talk about all this in my summary video uh 0.154 no less than 0.153 so as you can see the tdp is 0.154 measured out as 0.153 so a thousand smaller than it needed to be now the gas rings i don't have the gas rings up here Let's see if I can find a gas ring real quick. Bolt rings. They call them bolt rings. In paint. Do it in paint. Thank you for being patient. I appreciate it. And I hope this information is interesting. Uh, maybe not something that you're going to set and dwell on you know and everything else uh but the gas rings which are here on the bolt there's three of them on there it's a redundancy the gun will actually work with only one you probably should run all three but if in case it you one of them wears out or two of them wears out it'll still function with one not as well as it should not as efficiently as it should the tdp for the gas rings are 0.152 plus or minus a thousand so it could be 0 0.153 or 0 0.15 or 0 0.511 uh, in the Colt they were a little large when I measured it out so as you can see right here 0 0.15 0 0.512 god I can't talk today 
plus or minus 0 0.001. My measured out is 0.514. So as you can see, all the TDPs right here, and I'll scoot around where I can actually see it all, they were all pretty damn close to what it should be to TDP specs. And that is important. And I'll talk about it, that in the summary video, as you can see that. And if I didn't mention, if you want a copy of this, I created this document a long time ago. Uh, let me know in the video section, in the comment section of the video, and I'll be more than happy to send you a, uh, just hit me an email. Give me your email address and I'll send you an email copy of it so you have a copy of it. I would love to be able to send you the, the file for the uh, TDP, but uh, I don't want to get in any trouble by doing that. Uh, I tiptoe on the edge anyway, and I don't want to do anything else that's going to cause any more problems. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to show you, if I can get it up here pretty easily, extractor, the ring, bolt, firing pin. Uh, don't save. Don't want to save that. The bolt, this one here. Very, 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 very critical. So remember me telling you about the notes on uh, the blueprints for the TDP? This is the note page specifically for the bolt. There are certain aspects that things need to be followed in order to, for it to be mill spec. They have to mark magnetically particle inspected, have to be proof fired, everything else. And they need to be marked as you can see right here, let me scoot it over and put it right dead center of the screen. Uh, I was going to talk about that when I had the bolt up there, but mark proof firing symbol is a P, so it's proofed, and magnetically particle inspection symbol, which is M, MP. So the Colt says MPC, it's magnetically. Particle inspected and it's proof fired, meaning they use a very high proofed round to test fire these things. And they're supposed to be made out of Carpenter 158 steel. I'm pretty sure that's in the. Uh, there we go. Yeah, there's a whole lot of information on here. I'll go kind of slow. That way, if you want to stop the video so you can read all that, it's a shit ton of information. It really is. And notice it says either one or two shall apply, right? It has to, it had to all work in, a for, in order for them to pass and let those things go. The dimensions conforming. Okay, I'll stop on that so you can see it. You can pause. I'll go down to A, B, C. Pause there. Section two. You can see that. I'm scrolling down as much as I can, get as much in there as you can, so you can see it. It gives the identification, stamping what it's supposed to be, the, the dimension, and everything. They're very, 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 very picky about it. Um, let me see. Pull the other one up, just to be sure. I want you to see that it says Carpenter 158 or C158. A lot of times they're marked on it. Uh, this one wasn't necessarily marked on it, but I know it's a Colt bolt because of the other markings that it had on it. There you go. Applicable standard specifications, mil w 13855 the material. Steel, Carpenter 158, gun quality, annealed, stress-relieved bar, Brennell hardness of 170-2 or slash 235. Aim for 210. So, to remove all doubt, Carpenter 158 steel for this component. And for the carrier, it's 8620. And let me pull that up so you can see that. Uh, carrier, and I'm sure, oh, don't do this to me. Open and paint. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to change this program out so I can use it. The carrier, as you can see, this thing right here, steel, AISI 8620. This is per the TDP. You see that? Proprietary to Colt Incorporated. Years ago, they lost the patent on it, and FNN picked it up, or FN picked it up, and they made them, but they followed all this stuff to the nth degree. And down at the bottom, I'm not showing you anything I shouldn't. I'm gonna get off here before my wife gets in, and the dogs lose their shit. Yeah, so. Oh. All the drawings and everything. The original. Does this tell you anything? That's a long time ago. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comment section. And uh, let me know if you want to copy of that document. Thanks for watching. Jeffrey Mitchell out.